Dr. David Lamb has been invited to deliver the Clifford C. Jung peroration today. Dr. David Lamb is a rural GP based in the Air Peninsula and the 2019 RACGP National General Practitioner of the Year. He has a keen interest in rural general practice and medical education and is the rural medical coordinator at the University of Adelaide School of Medicine. In this role, he delivers weekly teaching to all University of Adelaide medical students based in rural South Australia. Now, Dr. Lamb is also the creator of GP Life Hacks, and I will say that's life with a Y, and I always emphasise that if you are interested, it's a fantastic podcast. And it's a podcast for GPs in training, uh, but particularly as his role as a medical educator at GPEX, he uses this as a platform for many important issues. He's committed to the training of doctors, and he was awarded the Derek Furon Citation for Clinical Teaching and the Best Rural Teacher Award at the University of Adelaide School of Medicine. David is also a touring guitarist and a DJ, if you weren't already aware of that. And um, please welcome to the stage Dr. David Lamb to deliver the 2021 Clifford Jungfer Oration. Pride team, family and diversity. These are the themes of today's oration. My name is David Huaymin Lam and I'm a proud Hakka Chinese Australian. I've been a rural doctor on the Air Peninsula since 2016 and today I'm honoured to receive my fellowship in advanced rural general practice and stand tall alongside each of you new fellows in front of our colleagues, our patients and most importantly our families. Congratulations to every one of you. It is also my honour to deliver the 2021 Dr. Clifford Jungford oration in memory of a superb and exemplary icon of our profession. The great Dr. Jungford was the national president of the Royal Australian College of General Practitioners from 1966 and the national censor in chief until 1971. His clinical work and research in the field of general practice created the blueprint of the college's modern specialist general practitioner training. For his service to the nation, he was awarded Commander of the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire in the 1960s and the Rose Hunt Medal, the highest honour in Australian general practice in the 1970s. He was described as a man of gentle manner, unfailing courtesy, determination and a fund of good stories. However, what I find most impressive of all is that Dr Jungfer served the same community of Lobethal from 1928 to 1979, a total of 51 years. This speaks undeniably to his loyalty and dedication to the people and makes me think this is a guy to whom I wish to aspire. One of his most prolific bodies of research was entitled The Prevention of Disease and Avoidable Disability with primary emphasis on personal action by the individual. By the individual. A system only works when each and every individual does their part and brings their share to the table. We all have a role to play. Today, we stand together as new fellows of the Royal Australian College of General Practitioners. We all come from different backgrounds and experiences, strengths and weaknesses, but regardless, we all have a role to play in keeping our community safe amidst a global pandemic. To play this role properly, every single one of us needs to be proud of the role which we play. The best part about being a GP is that you get to do it all. You get to heal the sick, be they young or old, male, female or non-binary, suffering from physical illnesses such as asthma or mental health issues like depression. One of the hardest parts about being a GP is breaking the stereotypes, such as the one where a doctor is only a GP because they weren't good enough to be a physician or a surgeon, and trying to explain to people what GPs actually do, you know, besides forgetting to opportunistically check blood pressures in the race to consult in five minutes and charge way too much to dish out repeat scripts of contraceptives and blood pressure medications every six months. <laughs> Suddenly, the thing that makes my job special, that is my huge scope of practice, becomes the main thing for which I'm criticised. That is, being a jack of all trades, but apparently a specialist in none. It's 2021 and most people still assume that a GP is simply a dude who finishes medical school, then immediately puts a hand-painted sign out front of his house, like in a Charlie Brown comic, saying, Dr. Surgery, new patients welcome. <laughs> that may have been the case a millennium ago, but too many people died from well-intentioned malpractice that way. These days, Every single one of the new fellows that you have come to support today has undergone a minimum of three years of further study and training beyond their basic medical degree, culminating in a series of intense nationally standardised exams, all while working as full-time doctors and, you know, trying to stay human once in a while. <laughs> it is very easy to burn out being hassled, 
by patients as to why in the age of Google and Instagram wellness, we need to see them so often for follow-up or why we don't bulk bill more because really we're just there to give out repeat scripts as opposed to doing actual doctor stuff like surgeries and CPR and emergency rooms. We are just as often having to justify ourselves to government regarding Medicare rebates. Too often we've been publicly undervalued compared to our colleagues in other specialties. Too much time is burned trying to perpetually convince ourselves and others that we are not just GPs rather than getting on with the job and taking joy in helping others. Who cares what other people think? We need to stop just talking about being proud of general practice and actually be proud of who we are so that we can play our part in society and be the best clinicians that we can be. No two of you have had exactly the same training experience to be receiving your fellowship today. And yet, each of you, without fail, has worked at multiple different practices, treated hundreds of patients of different ages, genders, beliefs, and issues, many of whom would have pushed you out of your comfort zone and forced you to adapt. You completed your training and earned this fellowship, not your supervisors, not your cardiologists or orthopedic colleagues. You, you gave up your lives outside of work to study for exams at the same time as being full-time doctors. You sat your exams, you passed your exams, you did so in the middle of a global pandemic and technical difficulties. You, so be proud of yourselves. Despite what anybody else thinks or doesn't think of general practice, nobody can take this moment away from you. No matter what path you traverse to get here, nor which path you take moving forward. Be proud, be proud. In memory of the selfless Dr. Jungfer, this oration is dedicated to all of you new fellows that carry on his legacy of service. Our actions speak louder than our words. Our relationships with multiple generations of entire families of patients speak louder than our words. It is our fresh eyes with which we see the world and our fresh ideas that will change the game. So be proud today. Pride, team, family and diversity. This oration is also dedicated to the team behind you, especially the team supporting you at home, that is, our families. Teamwork is what makes healthcare work. No one person can be in two places at one time. No one person can have all the answers. Everybody has a role, and I'd like to thank all the people on our team that led us new fellows to being on stage here today. The supervisors, who are already busy with their own careers, but have taken time that they already don't have to train us on top of everything else. The practice managers, who ensured you didn't accidentally defraud Medicare on your first day, and forced you to take annual leave once in a while when you were way past burnt out, but still doggedly showed up to work out of duty. Thanks to the practice nurses who made sure we didn't kill more patients in our first term and the admin staff whose timetabling admin made our lives somewhat livable. The most important parts of team were the teammates we had waiting for us at home, our families. And boy, were some of those guys waiting for a while. <laughs> On behalf of all of us who have newly fellowed, thanks to the husbands, wives, partners, kids and parents who put up with us on this journey. Thanks to my own parents who, as parents do, courageously, silently and simultaneously shared all the ups and downs with my brother and Nathan and I as we completed our GP training and continue to support us as we head 700 kilometres west together on Monday to serve the rural community of Streaky Bay. Thanks, Mum and Dad. Your reward is that you now get to do it all again as you support our sister Esther through her specialty training because apparently, as you keep telling us all, you don't have a favourite child. <laughs> Last time I spoke in front of this College Congress, I dedicated the oration and my National GP of the Year Award to my grandfather, the great Tech Chun Lam, University of Adelaide graduate, Royal Flying Doctor, Rural GP and Regional Medical Director of the Australian High Commission in Southeast Asia. Like Dr Clifford Jungfen, this was a mountain of a man. This time, I want to thank my beautiful, strong, independent and ferocious fiancé and dedicate my new fellowship to her. Mi amor, tu eres mi corazón para siempre. As if it were yesterday, I remember checking the RSCGP website, finding out that I'd passed, and I remember grabbing hold of her, pulling myself in and just bawling my eyes out. As I said over and over again, I couldn't have done it without you. All the times we'd had to move town because of my training, all the times she had showed up alone to social events because I was locked in a room studying, all the time that we were both woken up in the middle of the night when I was on call and that devil cursed on call phone rang. All the time that she believed in me when I was utterly convinced I was falling short of that which the profession required of me. I'm sure every one of your families can relate, so thanks to you all in the crowd for supporting us. As a consolation, I told my fiance, don't worry baby, now that I've got my ROC GP papers and have no minimum requirements, I'm gonna go work nine to four, three days a week and make sure dinner is on the table every night when you get home. <laughs> Those that know us personally will know that this isn't quite how it worked out. Being kind to oneself, Lauren keeps telling me, that's my next career goal that remains elusive still. 
pride, team, family. These are my first three messages in this oration. The fourth is diversity. This is what makes general practice as a specialty great. It's what makes us as a nation great. In the lead up to this oration, I had some great yarns with Uncle Mickey O'Brien of the Ghana and the Narunga people who welcomed us to country today. I told him that I laugh internally when people ask me whether I speak Chinese. Which one, I say? There's over 300 different languages in China and he knew exactly what I was talking about. I told him my mob was Hakka, which means in our language, the guest race. We are the one tribe that has no home province in China. We are nomads, gypsies. As a tribe, we perpetually exist as guests in the territories of other tribes and survive and prosper only when we understand and embrace other cultures alongside our own. There's an old Hakka proverb which says, when you enter a bay, you need to dock at the port. When you enter a new village, you need to ask their custom. Nobody tries to make landfall on a sheer rocky cliff face. That's a recipe for disaster. You dock at the port. As a good doctor, you also don't barge into an interaction assuming that you know everything. If you don't know, ask. So in preparation to delivering an oration on Ghana land, I asked Uncle Mickey if he could teach me some things about Welcome to Country and his people. He told me that culture is important. It gives us an identity and allows us to share with each other. It's not about one way of doing things being better than another. It's about what we can share with each other and combine to make everyone better. During the welcome, Uncle Mickey wears the traditional Ghana's kangaroo skin cloak, possum headpiece, ochre and feathers. Underneath this though, he is also wearing European clothes because this is now the modern combination of culture. With every welcome, he is just as much involving everyone as they are involving him because it's not just about seeing culture, he says, it's about everyone experiencing it personally. So with every welcome, he tries to understand the context of the event and incorporate that into his own welcome. To this end, not only has Uncle Mickey been teaching me so I can prepare for this oration, he's also been asking me just as much about my own speech so he could incorporate that into his welcome. Such an invaluable insight from Uncle Mickey. Culture isn't stagnant and dead, it is alive, dynamic and constantly evolving in the context of that which surrounds it. Yes, traditions are important. They keep us connected. They serve us with identity. They serve us with pride. However, culture is about the interaction between people. When two different people from two different backgrounds share their ideas and adapt, they both end up better off. And that is what culture is all about. That's what modern Australian culture is all about. Diversity is a blessing, not a shame job, and it is our many different personalities and backgrounds and the many different personalities and backgrounds of our patients which makes general practice rich. Our differences are what makes humanity great and yet is sadly still the reason we are inflicting so much damage on each other across the world. I based my last college oration on the hit TV show Game of Thrones. I can't do that this time because the last season was so bad and ludicrous after such a fantastic build-up. So this time, I will talk about The Witcher in the lead-up to season two being released on Netflix soon. <laughs> this TV show is based on a novel by Andrei Sapkowski in which the hero, Geralt of Rivia, otherwise known as The Witcher, wanders the countryside of medieval Europe with a great sword, superhuman strength and an array of magic spells, ridding village after village of monsters derived from Polish folklore, including dragons, 20-foot spiders, demons and evil sorcerers, so that the villagers can go about their activities of daily living. In this sense, I guess you could consider The Witcher to be the medieval equivalent of what is now more commonly known as the Rural GP. Sadly though, the same magic that grants the Witcher his superb monster hunting abilities renders him with physical side effects permanently. It changes his hair to ghost white, makes his eyes glow yellow and leaves him sterile and unable to make his own family. After devoting his life to the protection of others, Geralt of Rivia is cursed to walk the earth alone as a perpetual outcast, drifting from town to town, forced to survive on meagre monster hunting bounties. To add insult to injury, rather than being hailed as a hero and welcomed by the town folk for hunting the monsters, he is constantly the subject of suspicion and scorn. Many are threatened by him and wonder what deal he has made by the devil to be able to hunt better than the average human. Many more are disgusted by the fact that he has different hair and eye colour than everyone else and is considered ugly. Quite simply, just like Shakespeare's Othello or the Old Testament's Good Samaritan, he is judged, not on merit, but for being different. To top it all off, the town folk also take a huge issue with the fact that the Witcher charges a small monster hunting fee for service rather than simply bulk billing Medicare for services rendered in monsters slain. 
They therefore assume him to be a dirty mercenary as, a, as opposed to someone who is actually caring. They consider him to be an evil monster himself, albeit the lesser of two evils. Sadly, off screen, many of this army of new fellows will also be judged from time to time in their careers. Not by our decisions or our level of care, but by our skin colour, our accents and our backgrounds. I know I have been and will continue to be. Not commonly, mind you. Most patients and colleagues are grateful for my help, embrace my Hakka Chinese heritage and consider it brilliant when my unique perspective allows me to solve a problem that nobody else could using conventional means. But admittedly, sometimes, on a bad day, it only takes one person judging you to bring you down. Remember though, no matter what, diversity is our strength and only you can see the world from your perspective. You will see the world with fresh eyes. You will give the world your fresh ideas. Sometimes they will be well received, sometimes they will be treated with suspicion. Nonetheless, they will allow you to treat that heart sick patient that nobody else can connect with. It's so very easy to get caught up in comparing ourselves or justifying our very existence to others and ending up thinking that we are inferior because we are not someone that we're not. I will never be Clifford Jungfer. I will never be Tech Chun Lam. Am I inspired by them daily? Yes. Am I a better doctor from learning from them? Yes but I will never be them, nor should I be. The world needs me to be me, not someone else. That's somebody else's job. I just need to be David. The world doesn't need you to be someone else either. The world needs you to be you. So be proud of who you are and go live like it. No matter what happens in the future, nobody can ever take away what you have achieved in becoming a fellow of this college today. And nobody can take away our driver's GPs to help people no matter what their race, gender, belief, or postcodes, because everybody has the right to feel safe in Australia. Everybody has the right to be healthy, and that is what general practice is all about. And so, to end, I leave you with some words from Sia the Bear Khaleesi, captain of the South African national rugby team. Khaleesi came from a poor family and became the first black man to captain the Springboks, the national team of a country previously crippled by racial segregation, representing a sport which had historically banned payment of players in an effort to suffocate the working classes out of an upper class game. Upon leading his team to victory in the 2019 Rugby Union World Cup, Khaleesi told the post-match reporters, we come from different races and backgrounds, but can achieve anything if we all work together as one. Pride, team, family and diversity. Thank you.